The townsfolk scream and run in terror, their flaming torches and pitchforks falling from their trembling hands. Behind them, SCP-096 roars in monstrous rage. It will kill every single one of them. And to think, this had been the happiest few weeks of its life not long before. SCP-096 is one of the most fearsome anomalies ever contained by the SCP Foundation. Responsible for nearly as many containment breaches and personnel casualties as SCP-682, the Shy Guy is known for only a few things. Its long, pale limbs, its tendency to huddle in the corner of its cell weeping, and the fact that anyone who sees its face is doomed to meet a horrible, violent fate. Most of the researchers and civilians alike who have crossed SCP-096's past would have no trouble describing it as a monster, and some might even use stronger language than that. But though SCP-096 is certainly frightening to behold, and often deadly to those who behold all of it. The Shy Guy is not a monster, not to everyone. Once upon a time, it even had a friend. Many, many years ago, before the SCP Foundation first contained SCP-096, it was just a pale figure that hid from sight in the dense, snowy forest on a remote mountainside. There, its long, lanky body and unnaturally pale complexion allowed the creature to blend in with the landscape, skin like snow and arms and legs like branches and slender tree trunks. No one ever came into its domain, save for the occasional lost hiker, and it was easy enough for the Shy Guy to duck out of sight when they did come. In the warmer months, crews of lumberjacks would come through, and the Shy Guy would have to be more careful with its hiding, moving quickly to keep its face obscured from the strangers. None of them ever saw its face, though they could feel its presence. They would whisper amongst themselves about the feeling of being watched, recalling old lumberjack legends of the Hide Behind, a creature that stalked through forests and hid itself behind the trees whenever its prey turned to look. The Shy Guy was not trying to hunt them, it only wanted to be left alone but the lumberjacks still glanced over their shoulders nervously as they went about their work, swapping scary stories around the campfire at night when the work was done. But other than a rustling branch, a flash of white darting between the trees, or the occasional set of unnaturally large footprints in the snow, they never saw the creature they could sense sharing the woods with them. It was for the best that they didn't. They wouldn't have survived if they had managed to catch a glimpse of its face. The Shy Guy was happy with its home, or at least as happy as it could be about anything in its life. It was a lonely existence, never letting anyone truly see it. The creature's life was ruled by fear and isolation, the terror that one day its face would be spotted and it would be unable to control what it did next. Late at night when the world was asleep, save for a few owls nestled in the branches up above and scanning the ground for mice to eat, the Shy Guy would let itself truly feel the weight of its suffering, crying so hard its sobs shook the tree line. But other times when the land was still and quiet, when a fresh snowfall blanketed the earth in soft white powder, and all living things were hiding in a warm place until springtime came, SCP-096 felt something like peace. The dead of winter was its safest time, a time where it wouldn't need to listen for every sound and await potential intruders. But of course, winter never lasted. Eventually, spring would always come. The first blades of green grass would poke up through the melting snow, and life would return to the Shy Guy's forest. One day, the Shy Guy's guard dropped, and it made a grave mistake. It allowed someone to get too close before looking for a hiding spot. A man from one of the lumber camps setting up nearby saw the creature's face. The man screamed in shock and terror, but his screams were soon drowned out by the raw, animalistic bellow of the Shy Guy as it flew into an uncontrollable frenzy of rage and despair, chasing the man through the forest at breakneck speed. It was far faster than the man, running on longer, stronger legs than any human could have. When it caught up to the man in a foreign part of the forest that the creature had not seen before, 
it silenced his screams for good. All at once, the creature was alone once more. Then came the remorse, the inevitable feeling of deep, devastating loss that came over it every time it destroyed a person who had seen its face. The same cycle, over and over again, relentless and unceasing. Though it should have gotten used to the whole thing by now, it broke the poor creature's heart. Succumbing to sadness, SCP-096 slumped to the ground, cradling its head in its massive hands, and began to cry. Are you alright there? Are you hurt? A voice suddenly interrupted the creature's private lament. It froze at the sound, before lifting its head to seek out the source of the interruption. Who was that? Where were they? Did it have time to hide before they could see its face? The shy guy opened its eyes to see an old man standing only a few feet away from it, holding a cane. The man was facing it. His eyes aimed towards the shy guy's face, but they were unfocused. They could not see. The shy guy didn't entirely understand how, but it knew that the man was unable to see its face. For the first time in a very long time, it felt relief wash over it. You stop crying. Can you speak? The man walked closer to the creature, concern furrowing in his brow. Here, take my hand and come inside where it's warm. I'll get you a blanket and something to eat. The old man held out his hand expectantly and slowly, hesitantly. SCP-096 placed its hand in his. My, you're a big fellow. If you can stand, come with me. I will get you all sorted out. Unsure, but too surprised to do anything else, the shy guy silently followed the old blind man into a nearby cabin. Inside, it was indeed warm, a small yet pleasant space lit by a crackling fire in the hearth. It was the nicest place as CP-096 had ever been, cozy and dry, no snow or mud to be found. Every surface was smooth or soft, made for living comfortably. The old man led the creature to a little dining table and pulled out a chair, inviting it to sit down. He prattled on about how nice it was to have some company for once. Even if his new companion was unable to speak, he had plenty to say and was happy to fill the silence enough for the both of them. He turned on a radio, and it came to life with the sound of music and crackling static. Then he busied himself at the wood fire stove, where a pot of soup was simmering. He poured two bowls of soup, one for him and one for the shy guy, and placed them both on the table. SCP-096 wasn't sure of what to make of the cabin, the soup, or the spoon that the old man handed it to go with the meal. After a moment of watching the old man eat, however, it began to understand that it was food. It disregarded the spoon in favor of picking up the bowl and drinking straight from it. The broth, meat, and vegetables warmed the creature from the inside out in a way it had never felt before, and for once, the shy guy made a sound other than a screech or sob. Mmm! The old man laughed delightedly and agreed that the soup was indeed very good. The two ate the rest of their meal, and the old man placed a heavy blanket on the couch for the creature inviting it to stay for the night. In fact, it could stay as long as it wanted. Mikey had said the old man could really use the company, as well as an extra pair of hands to help out around the house. This could, he said, be an arrangement that benefited them both. With that, the old man went to bed, leaving the shy guy alone for the night. It considered leaving while the man slept, slinking back off into the forest and disappearing. But as it pulled the blanket over its body, it felt a sense of warmth and comfort enveloping it. This was a safe place, one where no one would catch it unaware and look at its face. Maybe it could stay, at least for a little while. Before long, the shy guy's eyes closed and it drifted off to sleep. The shy guy and the old man quickly fell into a routine from there. The old man taught the creature how to tidy up around the cabin how to chop wood and use it to keep the stove and fireplace lit. He showed it how to open cans of beans and retrieve meat from the cabin's smokehouse so they could fix their meals, and introduced the creature to all of his favorite stations on the radio. All the while, the old man talked, telling the creature stories of his life, his time in the army, how he met his wife, how it felt to lose her, how difficult it was to raise his children alone, and how rewarding it was to see them go off and start families of their own. During one of these stories, 
The old man remarked that his family would be coming out to visit soon and bring him some supplies to help him through the rest of the winter before the warm weather returned. The shy guy should have understood what that meant, should have planned to leave before the man's family arrived, but it was so overwhelmed by the joys of its new life that it didn't even consider the possibility. In this moment, it seemed that things would always be perfect. One morning, the shy guy awoke to the sound of a knock at the door. It jolted awake at the sound, gasping with fear. The old man rushed into the room, grinning excitedly. He told the shy guy not to be afraid, that it was only his son coming to visit. But SCP-096 panicked, it had to cover its face. Now, as the old man opened the door to welcome his son inside, the shy guy quickly buried his face in his hands, shielding it from the young man's eyes. Though the young man did not doom himself by seeing the creature's face, he couldn't help but cry out in shock at the sight of his father's houseguest. He tried to explain to his father that this was not an ordinary man in need of shelter, but rather some sort of terrible monster. He described the shy guy to his father, its lack of clothing, its emaciated form, and impossible height. But the old man would not listen to a word. He shooed his son out of the cabin, insisting that if he was going to be rude to his guest, then he could go ahead and see himself out. He told his son that the shy guy, no matter how strange it might look, had been a great help and comfort to him, and he would not tolerate a rude word against his new friend. He slammed the door shut, then apologized to SCP-096 for his son's behavior. Meanwhile, his son was distraught, his poor father living alone with a monster. He could not sit idly by while this continued. He rushed into town and told everyone all about what he had seen. Local lumberjacks spoke up with their own stories, telling him about the legends of the hide behind and the lumberjack who had gone out on a job in those woods and never returned home. This creature living with the old man had to be the same monster. The townspeople decided that enough was enough, and they were going to take back the forest and handle this monster problem once and for all. They grabbed whichever weapons they could find, from hunting rifles and kitchen knives to pitchforks and torches. All the while, they worked themselves up into a frenzy of fear and anger. Before long, the once peaceful people of the town had formed into an angry mob with the old man's son at the helm. Kill the monster, they cheered, as they stormed into the forest and towards the old man's cabin. The old man opened his door, expecting to find his son standing there again, and was greeted instead by everyone from his town, armed to the teeth and ready for a fight. They demanded to see the monster that he was keeping inside. When he refused, a group of men grabbed him by the arms, dragging him out of the cabin. As he protested, they insisted that they were doing this for his own good, to protect him from the hideous beast he had unknowingly welcomed into his own home. He struggled to break free, but he was not as strong as he had been in his youth, and he was outnumbered. SCP-096 watched as its friend was pulled from the cabin and taken outside, and it was unable to stop itself from intervening. It ran out of the front door where the angry mob was waiting. Neither SCP-096 nor the mob were prepared for what happened next. When the dozens of people standing there with their pitchforks and torches all found their eyes locked directly onto SCP-096's face. The creature had been upset before, but now it was positively furious. Its mouth stretched into a shriek that echoed off the mountainside as it began to rip through the crowd like tissue paper, massive arms swinging and knocking over people left and right until no one was left standing. Some of the townspeople tried to fight back, to prod at the creature with their pitchforks or swipe at it with the flames of their torches, but the attacks didn't even slow the shy guy down. Bullets fired from the feet of hunting rifles ricocheted off the creature's skin, not leaving so much as a dent as it tore through the crowd. By the time it was through, there was no one left except for the old man and his son. The old man called out to the creature, asking what had happened, asking if it was all right. But as always, the creature could not answer. And even if it could, it wouldn't have said a word at that moment. Its focus was elsewhere. Its eyes trained on the old man's son, the only person who had seen its face and was still alive. The young man ran off into the forest as fast as he could, tripping over his own feet as the terror made him too clumsy to see straight. The attempt to escape was in vain, and the shy guy took no time at all to catch up with him. 
It grabbed the young man in its hands, lifted him into the air as he squirmed and fought to break free. Then, it unhinged its jaw and swallowed him whole. When the shy guy quieted, all of its prey disposed of, it heard the voice of the old man in the distance, calling out for his friend. It knew then that it could never go back to the only person who had ever shown it kindness. It would not be safe for either of them. Instead, it would return to the deep, deep forest, to the life of solitude. But it would never forget that time in the cabin, or the only man who ever made SCP-096 feel as if it wasn't a monster at all. Now go check out SCP-096 vs. Siren Head, and SCP-096's sad end for more.